Hey guys, welcome back to Gear Force. My name's Fonte. We're taking a look at the Sofern Q8 Plus, a variable pocket son of a flashlight. But first of all, quick disclaimer this was sent along by Sofern for review, so thank you for them for doing so. However, I have done my best to make sure this does not influence my opinion of the light, and they did not provide any monetary compensation for the review, nor have they had any access to an early preview or any editorial input. With that said, let's go ahead and jump on into this with a size comparison. And this, <laughs> this, is, a, this is a big boy. So, channel staples, we have the 91mm Sasami knife glaring up. There we go. And 58mm dwarfed at the top there. In a more flashlight relevant comparison, we have a AA and AAA cell. And now the girth comparison, and this is girthy. And then let's go ahead and take a look at a 18650 and the cells that this actually uses, which is a 21700. Here we have the 18650 and down below a 21700, which came included with my review sample. And here we have the girth comparison. Still a very girthy boy. And with that, let's jump into a design overview. And first of all, of course, on the outside, we have a very nice aggressive knurling, if you can follow that. that. This is very grippy. And this is all actually heat fins. And then on the back here, we have a nice tripod mount. Standard quarter inch. On the so from the button the right hand side we have a USB C port under a flap. This does tail stand nicely as the base is entirely flat. And then up front we have our emitters and our reflector. So we have six emitters with a orange peel reflector. And this is actually something I've never seen before. This um central piece rising up, which kind of like extends the reflector between the uh the emitters normally when i see multiple emitters in flashlights they tend to end up like this where there's no real encouragement in between but this is a full-on attempt to have a deep reflector with a centerpiece which is interesting and i think it ends up working on the front we have our switch with a built-in led indicator and let's go ahead and take a look on the inside Got some very nice threading. We have our O ring for water resistance and also a nice pre greasing of the threads. And then here we have the terminal and driver. And then the battery compartment itself. Let me see if I can just shine a little light on that. Now, let's go ahead and jump into something that I want to highlight whilst this is disassembled, just because uh, taking this apart again and again is going to be a little bit annoying. So this runs on three 21700 cells, you can see here. And just a side note, if you have flashlights that use multiple cells, particularly lithium ions, it's really good to keep them together so that they age and wear uniformly together. It's just good for battery health and to stop things going awry. So this takes three, but the interesting thing is it doesn't need to take three. So I can put one single cell in here. And of course, whenever you're loading a flashlight like this, it gives me like Xbox 360, uh, you know, recharging vibes. So we have one cell. And I don't know if you can see that, but we have a green power indicator. And with that one cell, we have power. And we can go all the way up and all the way down. Now, I wouldn't recommend doing this. Um, it can run on a single cell, but it's not it's not good for that battery to do that on, you know, higher brightnesses. Um, but that was just a little interesting thing that I found that I thought I should point out. Now onto the brightness and runtime of the Q8 Plus. I'll leave this on screen so you can see. Now this does offer both stepped and stepless ramping. So at low, we have 200 lumens, and that's going to run for an impressive 27 hours and 45 minutes. 
on medium it's going to be 1800 lumens for 10 hours 16 minutes uh, moonlight was five lumens for 40 days high is 7000 lumens for four and a half hours and then turbo is 16000 lumens for two hours 36 minutes of course this is going to step down definitely from heat generation but those numbers aren't quite included here and then with that let's go ahead and jump into the ui of the sofa in q8 plus now the q8 plus uses the onderil 2 ui which is an open source flashlight ui that is extremely customizable um but as a result of that it is an extremely dense thing to go through and honestly onderil 2 has enough meat in it to warrant its own video and i'm sure there's people that can do a better job explaining that than me just to highlight the complexity um when you print it out in the manual you can't actually see anything like this is just squiggles this is how dense this ui is so i'll just be covering the simple ui version this is what it comes in by default and still has a lot of option and customizability but it's not the full-on juicy onderil 2 you might be looking for but that is fully supported by this light i'm just not covering all those details in this video so starting off with simple UI ramping mode, I'm um, just going to press it, it's going to come on, it does have mode memory, if you press and hold it is going to ramp up. I can feel the heat across the desk and if you press and hold again it's going to go down, that's insane. Uh, double clicking will go either to or from the safest mode uh, in terms of highness. So this can be either it's full potential turbo or it can be lower than that depending on what the temperature and voltage of the batteries involved is. So double click and then double click again. Oh dear lord. Um, that just 16,000 lumens, like my hand is just like just off camera here. And from here to here, it is broadcasting enough heat that that is quite uncomfortable. Um, if you want to switch between the ramping or the stepped modes then that's quite simple whilst the light is on you just want to make three clicks quite quickly so this is on one two three and then we should be in the other mode so on yep and the ramping you might notice is very very rapid so just again this is just press and holding it is very rapidly going through this and unlike other flashlight uis this isn't looping through this is actually going rapidly to the highest and then you have to take your thumb off and then come back down so let's try and get into an idea of what they are so this is the moonlight mode you can barely see it under the lights and then low medium high turbo uncomfortable and so that's just how you get from the ramped to the stepped now four clicks whilst the light is either on or off will get you into lockout so now this light will not switch on you just get a flash and then four clicks will also unlock it and it will come on far too bright and blind you and then you can also do other things whilst the light is switched off, such as three clicks will give you a battery check where the lights are representing the current voltage and then the flashlight will then turn off. You can also switch from simple mode to um, the full UI and you can also do a, a version check because that's that's the kind of firmware this is, baby. You can check your version on your flashlight. Um, and then whilst in lockout mode, you can also do momentary moonlight and momentary low so that you still have some usability whilst you're in lockout. But now that we've just nicked the tip off of the glacier, the iceberg, that is that UI, let's go ahead and take a look at the pros of the Q8 Plus. And first of all, I have to say it's the build quality. This is a big old hunk of aluminum, aluminium, however you would like to say it. And it's very well machined, very well anodized. It does give the feeling of a premium product. Um, and that includes even the orange peel reflector. Everything is nice and uniform and the threads all involved. It's just very well machined and it feels like you're getting your money's worth. 
not just in terms of batteries, because 321 700s is not, it's a significant amount of batteries as my brain shows circuits. But it's definitely a, a testament that, you know, you're getting a good product in terms of manufacturing for what you're paying. Next up is that this is surprisingly holdable. For, now, maybe my standards have just been shot to hell by carrying oversized lights. Um, however, for having three 21700s and 16,000 lumens and this many emitters, this is very, very holdable. And it's quite heavy, but you can pocket this in a jacket, preferably. If you're going to put it in a pant pocket, I hope you have a good belt. Um, and then other good is the UI. It, look, the, the meaty side of Ornderill is not for me. I prefer more set UIs. I'm not that deep into the enthusiast hole. Um, but the simple UI version does enough for me. I like that you can switch between ramped and stepped. That's very nice. I also think that having all of those options available is excellent. It gives you enough depth if you want to use it, but it can also function as a relatively straightforward and normal quote-unquote flashlight should you need it. And then finally, you have just the utter power of this light. I mean, 16,000 lumens is awesome. It makes you feel like a god. I'm sure more lumens would make you feel like a more powerful god, but the eye doesn't see light in a linear way, so that's going to be a, a hymnistic treadmill fall off. Um, this is this is amazing. You can use it in low light situations. You can use this on a walk. You can go to a field and light the entire thing up just because you want to. If somebody has poor intentions towards you whilst you're on a walk with this light, you may permanently damage their vision. That's entirely a possibility. You should not um, shine this light at its full potential at anybody that you like or generally just, just avoid it. it. It's really bright. It's really awesome. But with that power comes great responsibilities and some drawbacks. Now, in terms of how this can be improved or not necessarily the best, there are some things that you can avoid and that is heat buildup. This amount of power pushing that many lumens, it generates a lot of heat, and it generates that heat very quickly. This is felt somewhat in the Q8 Plus a little bit more than it necessarily needs to be. And I think that's for the sake of compactness. Here we have a Coke can, and as you can see, you know, the standard 330 milliliter Coke can, and it's it's near enough the same dimensions. It's not that far off. But when you have this on the higher brightnesses, and I mean high, turbo, anything up there, it gets hot very quickly. And the part that gets hot is all this, really. This will eventually heat up a little bit, but it's not too bad. But all of this will heat up. And what you'll find is, like, your natural grip is going to be involving this. These are heat fins intended to dissipate the heat, and you are going to want to hold them. So if you're going to use it for an extended period of time or you want to play around with those high modes or you have legitimate use for whatever, you're going to want to stick to this lower portion and ideally wear gloves. Um, although you making use of the tripod hole, even if you just stick a short tripod on it, to act like a handle. I did that a couple of times and it made it, handling it a lot easier. Um, just be aware this this kind of power isn't a joke. Yeah, you can have a lot of fun with it, but you can seriously injure yourself or damage things with this if you do not respect it and treat it well. Be aware of the heat. Make sure that you lock it out when you're carrying it if you don't need it to be unlocked. Treat it with respect because you can hurt yourself or others. Just be careful. But that heat and that compact is something to bear in mind. On the one hand, this is great because it's so handable. But on the other hand, it means it's... Sh short enough that you don't have more surface area for heat dissipation and you're you know you're running into the whole hot area as you're holding it naturally next up this does have a flappy and um, you know this is just a little bit of a nitpick i don't like flaps on usb covers they will degrade they will fall off they will get pulled off and depending on how they are you have trouble pushing them in this one i will say as far as flaps go it's actually very good let me see if you can hear this 
I'm not sure if you can hear that, but the fit is actually so good that it creates kind of like a little vacuum effect, which inspires a lot of confidence. And in terms of putting it back in, it's actually not the worst thing in the world. Um, not my favorite charging method, but again, USB-C is a nice standard to have. And besides the obvious weight and charging time drawbacks, that's all I really have to say in the negative aspects. Just be aware that you're going to be holding something that gets really hot and just handle it accordingly. Um, all in all, this is an excellent flashlight and I, I've wanted to, uh, to get my hands on something that's in this insane ballpark for a while. Um, I finally broken the 10,000 lumen mark and it's crazy and it's fun and I highly recommend that at some point you pick up a light like this, if not this exact one, although I, I can solidly recommend this light just so you can experience the crazy brightness that is there in such a small form factor. Just to give you a, a perspective of my flashlight journey, this is an Olight Mini Intimidator. Um, this uses three 18650s. It is, you know, like this is in smaller, smaller cousin. And this tops out, I, I think it was like 3,000 something lumens using three 18650s. Just how far technology has come in roughly a decade, 11, 12 years, is crazy, and I am here for it. So if you're looking for a pocket sun, if you're looking for a serious big business flashlight, or you really want a Unreal 2.0 powerhouse, the Sofern Q8 Plus is definitely something you should consider. Now, it does retail for around $98, I believe, regularly. I can't remember if that's with or without batteries. The batteries price might be a little over 100 However, there is going to be a coupon code down in the description below, as well as a link to help you get a better price. And if you click the link, we may get a kickback to help support the channel. Whilst you're down there, I would appreciate if you let me know your thoughts on the Q8 Plus and if there are any other Sofern models that you would recommend or any other powerhouse lights that you would like to see on the channel. If you're wondering, well, why isn't there any beam shots for this? All beam shots will be in a card up here, and I'll probably put that elsewhere in the video too, just so you can see it in a more condensed factor in a YouTube short. And I would greatly appreciate a like and subscribe. That would greatly help the channel. And if you would like to support more directly, please consider a Patreon or your channel membership or a coffee donation. But that's all. I've been Paul. This has been... A uh, pocket sun, and I will see you in the next one.